Hi guys, Mary McIntyre here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, which is primarily about astronomy, but sometimes we delve off into microscopy a little bit as well. You may, if you follow me online, you'll know that I recently treated myself to a new microscope. One of the things I most love to do with microscopes is to look for tardigrades, and there are plenty of videos on my YouTube channel showing some tardigrades that I found, but I've never actually shown you how I do it. I've only done this a few times myself, so I'm sure there are probably some things that I could do differently, but I've got some new techniques I want to try this time, so I'm going to just take you on that journey with me. So let's go tardigrade hunting. Okay, so what we're going to need is a source of moss, and this pile behind me here is a, an old tree that was cut down by a neighbour. They gave us the, um, the wood for our log burner, but this tree was very old and it is completely covered in moss. Every time I've tried to look for tardigrades in it, it is just teeming with them. So hopefully we'll find some this time. What you need is a blade, so I'm just going to use a craft knife, um, a petri dish to collect the sample and a pipette because we need to rehydrate that sample so if there are any tardigrades in stasis they can then rehydrate and we'll get to see them crawling around. So um, yeah, I'll flip the camera around and show you how I collect the sample. Okay, so these are some of the, the branches that are covered in moss. So I'll try and do this without blocking the view on the camera. So all you do is just get a dish of some kind. So I'm using a Petri dish and then you use the blade and you just basically scrape some off and collect it. You can use wet moss or dry moss. You just basically want to collect a, a few little scrapings of this into the dish. I try to scrape as close as possible to the wood. So I have a little bit more in here. There we go, so you can see we've got quite a bit of moss there. That's probably plenty for us to use for, for now. Okay, the next step is really important. You need to rehydrate the sample, but don't use tap water. Tardigrades are extremely hardy and can survive all kinds of extreme conditions, but chlorine in tap water is really not very good for them. So instead, I'm gonna use rainwater. Fortunately, it poured down here yesterday, so this is how much rain we've had in the last couple of days. There will actually be microorganisms in this water already, but I'm just gonna scoop a bit up with a pipette and just rehydrate all of this moss. The more water you put in here, the longer it's gonna take you to go through the whole sample. I always make the mistake of putting too much in, but I want to just make sure that moss is really nice and wet and I've got quite a lot, so I will regret my decision here. I've got about five pipettes worth more than I'll probably have time to go through. So now that's got lots of rainwater in it, I'll just need to leave that now for about 24 hours and just leave everything to rehydrate. So I will see you back here when the sample's ready to analyse. So it's the next day and the moss has been left overnight and most of this afternoon. So it's been there a good while, almost 24 hours now, and it's just been sitting there. I haven't touched it and I'll show you how I transfer that onto microscope slides in a second. So I've got a pipette and some microscope slides and cover slips. Uh, this is actually a little, an old goo glass jar that's got rainwater in it. And people think I'm crazy, but when I've been studying microorganisms on a microscope slide, I can't knowingly kill them. So I wash, uh, take the cover slip off, rinse the slide into that pot, and then I will go and pour that back over by where I isolated the moss. So I know not everyone is with me on that one, but it's, um, it's one thing to kind of accidentally kill loads of microbes when you go in about your daily business but to study them and get videos of them and then knowingly kill them is just not something that I'm comfortable with so so yep that's why I have a little wash bucket there um, I've got some tweezers so we can shake out the moss as well. Just quickly show you the microscope. This is a Celestron microscope that I bought recently and I absolutely love it. I haven't had a lot of time to play with it, but it's got four different lenses here on the turret. So it's got a four millimeter one, which is very wide field, which is absolutely great for hunting through big samples like this one. The other thing I love about it is as well as the binocular eyepieces it's actually got a trinocular port so I can attach my camera 
Um, so the camera is attached to the microscope using a T-ring, which is the same T-ring that you would use for astronomy photography and connecting your camera to the telescope. But instead of the nose piece um, being one and a quarter inch to fit a telescope eyepiece, this one measures 20 millimeters or two centimeters. So you put that on and it will just sit in there. The nose cone of that T-ring assembly will unscrew and you can then screw that straight into um, a CMOS camera. So our ASI 120 cameras will fit this. It's threaded the same way. So if you disconnect this extension tube, you can then attach the ASI camera to this microscope, which is fantastic. I could do that on my old one, but I had to take out one of the eyepieces here and, and pop that in place and it was a real faff having to keep taking the camera off and then putting it back on and then taking it off so now with one lever over here I can just basically move some light up to the camera so that I can switch between the two of them. So let's get started with prepping the sample. Watching over proceedings we have my little crocheted tidy grade or not so little in fact. I made this myself uh, last year. I suddenly had the urge to have a knitted or crocheted tidy grade. Um, incidentally if anyone would like to know how I made this I kind of wrote a crochet pattern for it so I'm happy to send it to you. I still haven't named this tidy grade so if you have any ideas of what it should be called whether it's a he or a she let me know in the comments below. Okay, so I have a microscope slide here and I've also got a little cover slip. Now these are very thin glass, so please be careful with them because if they break, you will cut yourself on them. My microscope slides are very cheap ones as well, so they don't have the rounded corners, so they can be a little bit sharp as well. So if you do have these, please handle them very, very carefully. Now what I've done every time I've looked for tardigrades in the past is to just basically get the pipette and suck some water up and stick it on the slide and then just start um, having a look around but actually it's better for the microscope and the optics of the microscope as well as actually keeping things in one place if you put a cover slip over the top because it will stop things from running out of the field of view quite so much. Now there's a fantastic microscopy channel um, called Microbe Hunter. Um, go and check him out. I'll put a link to the channel below this um, in the description box of this video. But basically, the last video of his that I saw, he basically was tapping um, bits of moss onto the microscope slide. So that way it deposits some of the water and some of the sample. And if there is anything kind of stuck to that moss or crawling around on it, you can see that it's very, very hard to see, but there is a puddle of water there now. So anything that might have been nestled within that moss is now on the microscope slide rather than crawling around the moss. Because if you put moss on the microscope slide, you can't see half of what's going on, to be honest. There's just... You, you just have solid lumps of green when you magnify it and then basically you can't see anything other than moss and occasionally something will peep out. Now because I used rainwater for this from a rainwater that was just sitting there there's a good chance that some of the microbes that I find in this sample have come from the water rather than just from on the moss but um, if I see anything interesting, I will hit record on my camera, then we can have a look together at what's in this sample. Now I'm going to need to do that over and over again for all of the, the liquid that's in here. So as I said yesterday, if you use a lot of water, this is going to take you a really, really long time. Uh, so I'll tap the moss on first of all, and then I may start just sucking the water up with a pipette and see what we can get. But let's have a look. We might get lucky and catch something interesting. Now the cover slip is fairly small, but not in microscopy terms it isn't. So basically, the way that I look through my sample is to start in one corner and then work along in slices. So I will start in the corner there, move the stage to the left and have a look through all of that, then move it towards me a little bit and then go back the other way again. And it's painstaking, but it's the only way to be sure that you've checked all of the microscope slide. So that, that's how I make sure I'm not missing anything. So 
So I've just found a little mite, I think it is. So this is at the lowest power. So you can see it's not very magnified on the, the 4mm objective, but it's really good for scanning across a huge sample. So that's him at the lowest magnification through the camera with no lenses or anything on. So I'll just zoom in a little bit and have a look at him a bit closer. He's very sweet. And there's a little nematode worm. Always find these in these sorts of samples. Tardigrades can actually eat um, nematodes. This is a rotifer. I think rotifers are really adorable as well. I really like finding them. <laughs> They're just very active though, won't stay still. And moving so we won't stay in focus either. I'm not sure what this is, but it looks like some kind of egg sac. Um, I have seen rotifers hatching from eggs and I've seen tardigrade eggs before, but this is a pretty empty sac of some kind. It's got some tiny little single celled organisms zooming around inside it, but I don't know what that is. Um, I'm no expert on microscopy, um, but just thought I'd film that because it looks really interesting. Here's another empty sack of some kind. Um, I know tardigrades do shed their skin as they grow. I've never seen one, so I don't know what one looks like. So completely guessing here that it could be something like that, but it could also just be an egg sack of some kind. There's so many interesting things in these samples, even if you don't actually find any tardigrades. I'm just trying to give you a snippet of a few of the things that um, I commonly see in these samples. I am no expert on what all this stuff is or how it works. Um, so, yeah, hopefully you're finding this interesting. I always see a lot of fragments like this, which is like a single cell layer of some plant material. If you did GCSE biology, you'll remember that animal cells look quite different from plant cells. Plant cells tend to be squarer, they've got an extra cell wall that um, makes them stronger. And when you see fragments like this, they tend to look like brickwork. They're um, just so regular and so, so incredibly different from um, kind of biological material. So I see quite a lot of these when I'm looking through samples, looking for tardigrades, and I always find them so interesting. It reminds me of when we first looked at onion skin under a microscope when I was at school and just seeing how unbelievably different plant cells can look. So definitely look out for that if you um, try to recreate this experiment. I have no idea what this is. It's got a really vivid kind of orangey red colour to it, um, which probably isn't showing up very well on the video, so I'll try and take a few stills as well. I've never seen this before, whatever this is. Um, I have literally no idea. Uh, it looks so different from anything I've looked at before in samples from moss. So if you know what it is, please let me know in the comments. Actually thinking about it, it looks like bloodworm. Uh, we used to sell that as a live food in my family's aquarium shop. Uh, it's food that you give to fish. Uh, it could be that. I've never seen bloodworm under a microscope before. They're so very red and I don't know anything else that I'm aware of that would be that colour. So I think the most likely thing is bloodworm for this one. Okay, so it's now the second day of tardigrade hunting. This is actually a couple of days since I was last filming. So um, I'm just gonna try sucking some bits of this um, sample up with a pipette and see if there's anything interesting in there. I will keep going, there's still quite a bit of liquid in here and I keep tapping the, 
the the algae to the, the algae sorry the moss so that we can tap anything off that might be lurking so i'm just going to keep going through this sample and if i see anything interesting i will hit record on the camera on top of the microscope Another mysterious little dude. Um, I've never seen one of these before either. It's such a strange shape and it seems to be working its way along these little strands of moss to feed. Normally the stuff around this side that's kind of zooming around are paramecium's, but um, I don't know what this is. It looks different from other paramecia that I've seen. It could be one, but very unusual, so interesting. So just to make a total liar of me, for the first time ever, there were no tardigrades in the moss sample that I took from those logs. Um, I'm not disheartened, I'm going to try again. I've got my petri dish and I've got something to scrape some moss off. We had a lot of rain yesterday, so I have a lot of rainwater in the garden that I can rehydrate it with. So fingers crossed it'll work this time. <laughs>
this is a rotifer still in its egg sac and it looks like it's very very close to actually hatching. If you watch this particular clip you can see some material come out of the egg sac in a moment. I've got quite a lot of footage of this and I'm going to put it all together in a separate video because it's quite interesting to watch. I am now of course kicking myself for not staying with it and uh, just seeing what happened as this thing hatched but Honestly guys, by this point I've been tardigrade hunting for so long that I just figured I was never going to find any so I just wanted to carry on looking at the rest of the sample. As I said, I did wash this away into some rainwater and relocated it outside so um, hopefully it hatched and is going about its happy little life. And finally, I found a tardigrade. <laughs> Honestly, it's never taken me this long to find a tardigrade in a sample before, um, but I did find one. So um, a couple of little points to make. First of all, try, uh, trying to keep these guys in focus while they're moving when all I can see on the back of my camera is a small screen is really difficult. Plus they're quite chunky organisms and basically is if they move through the depth of field part of them is always out of focus unless you extract frames and focus stack them so as they're wiggling around it's really really hard to have the whole organism actually in focus at any one time so apologies for the focus changing but I was having to just keep moving back and forth through the plane of focus hoping that we'd get little glimpses of the hooks on the feet and stuff like that there's a couple of different objectives I was using here so I'll, I'll stop talking and just let you watch the footage of these adorable little guys.
this is the final clip. Thank you so much for watching if you've made it to the end. I know this is a long video, but I hope you found it useful. And if you have a go at tidy grade hunting, don't forget to let me know how you get on. Good luck and thanks again for your support, guys. Bye for now.